When the British learned that Germany was launching the colossal Bismarck battleship and the heavy cruiser Prince Eugen to ravage the Atlantic, they drafted a plan to ambush them, no matter the cost. On May 24, 1941, the battleship HMS Prince of Wales and the battle cruiser HMS Hood faced off in a savage naval engagement that became known as the Battle of the Denmark Strait. However, the British greatly underestimated their German counterparts' naval audacity and firepower, and the cost to pay was too high. Only minutes after the confrontation began, HMS Hood was hit near her aft ammunition magazines, and the largest ship in the world started to sink immediately. It was now up to HMS Prince of Wales to fix their powerful opponent on her own and stop them before suffering even more dire consequences. Fighting a Giant in September of 1939, France and Great Britain declared war on Germany after Adolf Hitler ordered the invasion of Poland. Although both nations hoped to outmatch the Wehrmacht together, they were quickly proven wrong. Shortly after the fall of Paris to the Blitzkrieg forces in June of 1940, France and Germany signed the peace treaty. The Vichy puppet government was allowed to retain its armed forces, including its navy, as long as they refrained from further attacks. From that moment on, Britain was on its own against the Teutonic giant, as most of Europe quickly succumbed to the unstoppable German forces. The powerful Royal Navy and the Royal Air Force were the invisible barriers that prevented the Germans from taking over the nation. And even though the Kriegsmarine was numerically inferior to the Royal Navy, it had a hidden card up its sleeve, the U-boats. When the Sea Wolves were released to hunt down merchant convoys in the Atlantic, they became unstoppable. Working together with the few pocket battleships that the German Navy could afford, the Kriegsmarine ravaged the sea, sending thousands of tons worth of supplies to the ocean's depths. The rope slowly began to choke Britain as supplies ran low, including equipment, ammunition, food, and more essential resources for the war effort. The Germans were desperately forcing their enemies into surrender. Despite the Royal Navy's constant patrols over the Atlantic and the Mediterranean, the Admiralty was extremely concerned. Even worse, just when the British were about to be defeated by Germany's raids in 1941, the Naval High Command ordered Admiral Gunther Lütjens to prepare a secret naval operation. If it was successful, Britain would have no option but to surrender. Operation Exercise Rhine The German plan's objective was to use their biggest and newest warship, the Bismarck, to attack the Allied convoys in the Atlantic. The battleships Scharnhorst and Gneisenau had recently completed Operation Berlin in March, and they hoped that Bismarck would conduct one of the last commerce raiding missions before the British surrender. The operation was called Rheinebung, or Exercise Rhine. Admiral Erich Johann Albert Raider wanted to continue putting constant pressure on the English and believed that defeating Britain using the commerce raiding blockade was possible. The original plan called for Bismarck to set sail for the Atlantic with the support of Scharnhorst and Gneisenau and heavy cruiser Prince Eugen, but it would turn out differently. Gneisenau was hit by an enemy torpedo and put out of commission for six months while Scharnhorst's engines were being repaired at the French port of Brest. That left the Kriegsmarine with only Bismarck and Prince Eugen to carry out the operation. Still, Raider wanted Admiral Lutjens to sail as soon as possible. However, Lutjens told Raider that he thought it would be wiser to delay the operation until Bismarck's sister ship, Tirpitz, was operational, or when Scharnhorst and Gneisenau were ready. Raider did not agree, and was desperate to keep putting pressure on the British supply lines. Forces at Sea Before the operation, Raider told Lutjens that, quote, The objective of the Bismarck is not to defeat enemies of equal strength, but to tie them down in a delaying action, while preserving her combat capacity as much as possible, to allow Prince Eugen to get at the merchant ships in convoy. The primary objective was to hunt down enemy merchant vessels, and warships would only be engaged if necessary. The Kriegsmarine then established tankers and supply vessels around the area, from the North Sea to Labrador near Canada. Prince Eugen sailed on May 18, 1941, from Gotenhafen, Poland, followed by Bismarck a day later. On May 20th, both ships were sighted by the Swedish seaplane cruiser Gotland, near the strait between Jutland and South Norway. The Swedish government immediately notified the Admiralty, and British reconnaissance aircraft later confirmed the data. Consequently, the Royal Navy began dispatching patrols to the possible routes the Germans were likely to use to break into the Atlantic. 
The heavy cruisers HMS Norfolk and Suffolk were sent to patrol the waters between Greenland and Iceland, while a separate patrol under the command of Vice Admiral Lancelot Holland was sent to southern Iceland to engage Bismarck and Prince Eugen if they were detected. Holland's forces comprised the battlecruiser HMS Hood, the battleship Prince of Wales, and six destroyers. Meanwhile, the two German vessels resupplied on May 21st and headed towards the Denmark Strait, where the British patrols were awaiting them. During the evening of May 23rd, radar-equipped HMS Suffolk detected Bismarck, but remained outside its gun range, going for cover in a fog bank. HMS Norfolk was soon detected, and Bismarck opened fire from about 9.5 kilometers. None of the ships were hit, but Bismarck lost its radar and forced Prince Eugen to stay ahead of the formation. The British then redirected every naval group available in the region to hunt down the German ships, thus beginning the Battle of the Denmark Strait. Face to face. Vice Admiral Holland's plan was to send Hood and Prince of Wales after Bismarck, while Suffolk and Norfolk fought against Prince Eugen. If more ships reached the targets on time, the fight would be easier, but the situation got trickier when Suffolk lost contact with Bismarck at about 3 a.m. on May 24th. Still, Hood and Prince of Wales made contact with the German force at 5.52 a.m. at a range of 24,000 meters, and Holland needed to choose between keeping distance and waiting for backup or to attack with the four ships at hand. Holland eventually decided to engage, but the rough seas prevented Suffolk and Norfolk from approaching Bismarck at the same time as Hood and Prince of Wales. As Bismarck opened fire at them, Holland knew that if he could not close the distance with the German ships, it was a matter of time before Hood's thin deck armor would be penetrated by the enemy's vertical fire. HMS Hood was the first Admiral-class battlecruiser to be developed during World War I, and remained the largest warship in the world for 20 years after its commission. The mighty ship was scheduled for a major rebuild in 1941 in order to face more modern ships, but she was ultimately commissioned without the upgrade. With this in mind, Holland raced to the battle zone as fast as possible. If the four British vessels managed to close the distance, the trajectory of Bismarck's shells would be flatter and probably hit Hood's armor belt, which was stronger. Although Suffolk and Norfolk tried to engage Bismarck, they were out of range. Even worse, the wing favored the German ship, and there was no way that Holland would close the distance gap in time. Hood and Prince of Wales were now on their own against Europe's largest warship. A Taste of German Firepower Holland then ordered Prince of Wales to stick close to Hood and protect her, but the maneuver only made it easier for the Kriegsmarine to aim at them. Prince of Wales struck Bismarck first, hitting one of her seaplanes. Hood then followed after engaging Prince Eugen. The Germans counterattacked with precise fire. Both enemy vessels immediately began to concentrate their fire on Hood, and Prince Eugen then scored a hit on Hood's boat deck between her funnels, resulting in a large fire close to the ammunition magazines. While the Germans were busy targeting Hood, Prince of Wales scored another hit on Bismarck, passing through the bow from one side to the other without exploding. Ten minutes into the engagement, Holland ordered both ships to turn to port and ensure that the aft guns could hit the enemy ships with their 14 and 15 inch guns. A lucky salvo from Bismarck at around 16,000 meters struck Hood's main deck during the turn, with some of the shells and burning debris impacting the mainmast and a turret after the mast. A massive pillar of flames that shot upward like a flamethrower followed, and a subsequent magazine explosion destroyed the aft part of the ship. With its back broken, Hood immediately began to sink. The sailors barely had time to react, and the world's largest ship sank in just under three minutes. Only three men survived out of a crew of 1,418. The commanding officer of the Prince of Wales, Captain Leach, had to disengage his enemies if he wanted the men to survive. Still, the ship scored a third hit on Bismarck, damaging a boiler room and flooding it. While on retreat, the Royal Navy ship was hit seven times by Bismarck and Prince Eugen, but managed to escape in one piece. Admiral Lutyens refused to chase Prince of Wales and opted to continue engaging the enemy only if necessary. While the Germans emerged victorious from their confrontation, the loss of HMS Hood, including Vice Admiral Holland and her crew, infuriated the British, which assembled every available ship to hunt down Bismarck. They would find her only three days later, sinking her once and for all. Thank you for watching my video. Please like and subscribe to our Dark Documentaries channels to find more exciting historical content. And let us know in the comments below what you think of this naval engagement and the Reich's decision to send Bismarck without proper escort.